So, all right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Hassan. Um, I'm from Finland, uh, uh, living in a place called Oulu. And uh, currently, I'm working as a doctoral researcher in Center for Ubiquitous Computing, University of Oulu. And uh, also have kind of a partial role in the fintech industry as well. So this paper is uh, mainly about uh, uh, kind of developing an AI-driven roadmap for implementing a smart excavator. And uh, it has been uh, funded by a 6G flagship grant where we are working with six generation communication paradigm. So I'll just first go through uh, the agenda and the contents. So first I would like to highlight uh, uh, what actually drove us to actually write this kind of paper. So mainly about the motivation, then I would briefly talk about the challenges, then how did we draw the requirements for developing such a uh, solution, and then uh, the proposal of the theoretical framework, and then the architecture we are currently using uh, for the proof of concept and experimentation, and then uh, would slightly go through a use case scenario, and then we would shortly discuss and conclude the presentation. So um, we know that uh, with the uh, techn technological advances so far going through, I'm like, uh, we know that the excavators, they are potential uh, both in the research market and of course in the commercial market as well. There are quite a lot of application areas and so does the technology is also advancing day by day. And uh, recently you would see that the machine control systems are being quite uh, prominently utilized in developing this uh, autom autonomous uh, excavators and for automation purposes. And which the most important point here is that we should be focusing on, we should be realizing that uh, with the adoption of this uh, internet of things and then having the connectivity is more like a ubiquitous uh, um, practice nowadays becoming every device, every thing is being connected to inter internet and uh, we are getting more like, it's more like uh, in everybody's usage now. That brings about these communication advances as well. I'm referring to this uh, fifth generation, five gigs, and then the 6G communication paradigms. So which kind of provides us quite a great amount of opportunities so that we could automate, we could be able to control the things in autonomous manner than following the traditional approaches. Then another uh, factual point would be that if we go back maybe two decades back, probably, we would say that there was kind of a traditional paradigm to use the automation to automate the things we used to be automating things at the machine level more than at the data driven level. So in the past decade, there has been a great shift. We have became more data oriented, more algorithm oriented. So we are working on a more higher level now. So the main reason behind having such an approach is to be adopted is that we want to create uh, increased efficiency of such machines. And then with this uh, trends of uh, the domain, you would say that we have this, uh, great example of mining excavators are being used and you know that a mining area especially comes with a lot of hazards so there are safety concerns for the human so we try to automate we try to make the intelligent machines so that these kind of things could be avoided and then there comes to be a very demanding area is space exploration and then to tackle or to manage the natural disasters. So in Japan, and there are a lot of places, others where it comes to be the earthquakes and stuff. So the robotics are playing a key role there, area there. And then lastly, it's civil engineering. So another reason is that we want to decrease the cost. And another reason which would be there is that we want to address the safety challenges there. But this is all, of course, the perks. But the thing is that these kind of uh, intelligent machines, they comes with uh, quite a lot of challenges when it comes to implementation. And another thing would be that that it might be so that a machine which is automated in a, in a more like a ground space, it might not be efficient enough where the landscape is deviating, where the soil characteristics are deviating. It might be so that the same machine might be being utilized in the desert area, might be utilized in the mountainous areas. So we need to have sort of robust solution to address these sort of challenges. 
So the key challenges we were able to identify was that how do we identify it, mainly the requirements, how, how, what are the sort of kind of key requirements to develop such a AI-driven autonomous excavator. And then the, the, the challenge comes with the, like I said, that IoT and 5G, that how can we actually collect, store, integrate, and analyze the, manage the data coming from the equipped sensors in the real time from the excavators. We know that the machines are now uh, able to communicate. They are able to communicate through the any wireless communicate uh, wireless paradigm or even through the internet. So this brings out the challenges there that how can we make the lightweight solution which machine is able to actually attain. And then there comes to be a point of the drift. We know that sensors are calibrated with uh, if, if let's say that if the sensors are from different companies and even if from the same company, there could be a calibration difference there. So it can possibly result in a drifting scenario there, which if let's say is integrated with the machine learning or AI learning approach there. So what if this drift stays in the data, which could eventually end up end up in a more greater phenomena, which is called concept drift. And then we won't be able to actually have the effective predictions from such learners there. And then the last challenge is that what kind of tools and the frameworks we can utilize to implement uh, such a autonomous framework considering both the edge and cloud computing paradigms. Okay, so I will just briefly go through the, what has been so far done in the uh, state of the art. Uh, we know that the excavators have uh, become more perception oriented. They are usually equipped with a LIDAR, radar, laser beams, cameras, GPS, and others to actually detect the surroundings, to the, detect the environment, to identify the soil requirements, characteristics, and so on. So, so these kind of things has been uh, addressed using uh, in one of the study using a multi-frame LSTM, which is a, a neural net time series neural net, which based on a YOLO, which actually kind of use a segmentation uh, of the frames which we gather from the images and uh, which eventually help us in detection of the objects in the field where the excavator is working. Then another thing, which was that uh, dynamic movement primitive method, which was actually specifically used to actually uh, identify the soil characteristic. So let's say that one portion of the soil is kind of having uh, stones there, the other one is not there. So how, how does the uh, smart excavator, autonomous excavator would be able to differentiate between that? So this, this uh, DMP method was used there. Uh, but then there comes to be the point of the uh, issues of changing light condition. It might be so that the learner is able to perform better in the daylight, but not at the night line. That was a problem with the multi-frame LSTM. And then it could be another thing was that uh, collision uh, avoidance. So these kind of challenges are there. Of course, there are efforts being made, but there is so far, uh, there is not a robust solution which is able to count all of these challenges there. Then there are some main enabling application areas for smart excavators are mining construction sites, space exploration, natural disasters, forest industries. But of course there comes to be challenges in there. So addressing the functional requirements for proposing in the real time. So it might be so that it's not always gets through that the sensor are able to actually get the most optimized data from there. So it might be so that you would have to do the, uh, the pre-processing on, 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 on in the air actually. So that requires to have a lightweight solution in there. And then real time monitoring and visualization when we talk about the edge computing, which is actually we are trying to do is that what edge computing says is that we do the processing at the local level, at the machine level, rather than sending the data to the cloud and then waiting for the optimization and the results back there. So which kind of gives the challenge of the low latency. Let's say that if the excavator is in a hazardous area and we need to have the decision ready quickly. So let's say if the data is being sent to the cloud and coming back, it might take a minute or so. And that, that time is quite greater to have a decision. You know, we need more, more narrow window there. And then having the fault tolerant solution, let's say that the, the system goes down. So what, what should be done there? So of course, there is a way to that we could develop, integrate the manual control interfaces to address such kind of challenges.
Our contribution here is that for the first question, requirements for implementing AI-driven autonomous excavator, we went through the state of the art and considering the, the, the requirements for the project, we kind of embedded them both all together. So we identified that we need to have the adaptive control in there in place, motion planning should be there, and then monitoring and continuous simulation in there, and the real-time processing and analysis. Then there was this a challenge about how do we collect the data and analyze the data, and then how can we address the drift from the sensor? So we propose a hybrid architecture considering both edge and computing, cloud uh, computing paradigms with the user application interface, which is actually equipped with a number of uh, frameworks and uh, which allows us to actually uh, continue these tasks in the real time. So of course it remains to be an open research question because edge computing is also a new area and then integrating the edge computing and autonomous excavator brings out other great challenges. So at the moment they are very less lightweight solution which are capable of doing so. So some of the examples are that mini NIFI and the Apache Spark which has been used uh, uh, in, in one of a project in Germany for the road detection. And then of course, this tradition MATLAB Simulink is there. So what we propose is that we propose three technology dimensions where we kind of segmented them with sensing and planning, control operation and communication integration. So our idea is that, so there one module should be task planner where the tree sensing and modeling or localization could be done. So the data from this sensing uh, should be utilized to actually design the excavation models. And then there could be integrated with the uh, machine learning algorithms, the learners, which could be able to learn in the real time and the process the data in the real time. And the, on the lower bottom, we have this edge and cloud based architecture there which allows to send the data to the cloud for the historical references. And of course, for the quick decision making, the edge paradigm is used. And then control operation is mainly about uh, specifying the soil characteristics, path optimization, which actually takes from the learners there in the first uh, dimension. Then in, on the other hand, we provide two interfaces. One is the autonomous where the learner does the, all of the tasks there. And then we integrated the manual control interface, which could be utilized in case of any malfunction. And then the communication integration mainly addresses the issues of the communication. At the moment, we are communicating our 5G and then uh, the sensor integration is there. And then in the simulation and manager part, we mainly focus on the integration and uh, monitoring and simulation. Why do we have simulation module is there is that we could be able to, let's say that on a side there is an administrator, he should be able to uh, continuously monitor the, the data there. Let's say, if, so he, he could be able to foresee any situation coming up. Let's say if there is a drift coming and the learner is not able to you know, grasp that, so there could be, it could be overridden through a manual interface. So of course it needs time to have a robust learner there. So this is work in progress anyway. So this was main about our general idea. How do we want to proceed further? Then the architecture here, if you see that in the lower bottom, we are starting from the settings and control, uh, which mainly uh, contains this uh, sensor integration and the communication. And then we uh, also pro uh, provide that manual control interface in that part. Then the machine is equipped with the sensors, which is then which sends the uh, sense data from the sensor, of course, to the database at the edge. That means that the, uh, there is a tiny database at the machine excavator as well. And then for the simulation and historical insight, we send the data to the cloud. So the simulation insights are actually done at the cloud level. So the learner there also sends the data from the cloud to uh, to the edge, which is referred at the knowledge transfer. And then uh, the processing analysis, it's done at the left level, which is uh, the machine learning modeling and the mapping. So at the moment it is being done at the cloud. So we are working on having an efficient lightweight solution, which could be actually uh, considered uh, to be integrated at the machine level as well. So this is kind of uh, kind of process and uh, experimentation process. Then on the other hand, uh, we also provide this uh, visual interface. So because we know that we have become more, the devices are more become ubiquitous. 
they're more mobile. So we are kind of providing this real command and control sort of thing with the application interface for mobile and tablet. So kind of mobile and tablet, they kind of encompasses all the knowledge which is coming from the cloud and the edge. So let's say at the site manager would be able to foresee the situation if there is anything additional to be done, which could be done, you know. So these kind of things are there. Uh, so to interrupt, uh, two, two minutes left. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, so yeah. So for the use case scenario, right now we are using Grasshopper or Rhinosaurus with the CAD. So the model we are using for the excavator is Bobcat E85 robotic excavator. So if you see that in the picture, so this is a real time experiment and there is no man standing in there. So we were able to actually do some experimentation and the, the, the digging process was sort of successful. But of course, as I mentioned that this is a work in progress. So there are some key challenges with this uh, framework grasshopper. Uh, we are using at the moment for the proof of concept. So, but of course we want to move further to NIFI or the other tools, which we kind of are working that if it's feasible to be integrated in there. At the moment, we have three modes, remote control learning mode and automatic control for the executing, uh, executing the model based trajectories. So the learning mode is that we, uh, a man is actually doing different iteration where the model learns the stuff and then model becomes to be self-autonomous. About the discussion, so uh, we have sort of compliance so far for generated requirements. What are what are the main benefits we have seen that considering the edge and the cloud space challenges that it, these kind of autonomous solutions, they provide real-time planning. We are able to save the fuel. It's more sustainable solution than having this manual control and the humans are there and are uh, concerning that safety issues and so. And then uh, we uh, another thing is that adaptive algorithms with capabilities of handling, handling concept drift. So this is a key challenge in there. We are able to train the learners, but so far we are not able to address the drifting challenges uh, at the learner. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of evident in most of the solution at the moment. And uh, we provide a scalable architecture which can be extended however we want. And then uh, faulty predictions can be overridden, overridden using a manual interface. Of course, there are future prospects with the XR, extended reality and augmented reality, uh, which is a kind of a thing we can see after five years or so, which might be in this field domain as well. Of course, it is right now in the games and so and so in the simulation based areas. So, but uh, this is something, it's more like a future prospect there. So I would just conclude that uh, we are at, of course, initial stage of implementation. Uh, effective, effectiveness of the system is still not well covered. We are further looking for the state of, uh, state of the art metrics so that our system could be evaluated. Of course, there are privacy and security uh, uh, issues there. 5G is a new technology and there needs to be some sort of things to be done. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Hassan. It's a very interesting.